Welcome to another special edition of Top Lines and Tales, the nation's favourite livestock podcast. And this week we're doing a podcast in conjunction with the Irish Aberdeen Angus Association uh, regarding an event that they've got coming up soon. I'm absolutely delighted to be talking to Shane Murphy, uh, the Breed Secretary of the Irish Aberdeen Angus Association. And uh, Shane, great to talk to you and welcome to Top Lines and Tales podcast. Thanks a million for having me, Andy. Uh, I'd just like to jump in here at the start and congratulate you on your new book. It's absolutely super. I haven't got much chance to to go over it yet, but what I have read is um, excellent and it's going to last the test of time. That's very kind of you to say so. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. And all those other people out there who've picked up a copy enjoy it as well. And uh, the reason I'm chatting to you today, Shane, it's great to have your company, as I said, but uh, is we're going to, well, you, you in a couple of weeks' time, you're hosting the the Aberdeen Angus Extravaganza there in, in Turles in, in uh, Tipperary. And um, and you've invited me to come along and, and uh, have a chat to you about that. So uh, I'll, I'll get, let you take the floor with us a little bit. Uh, and Angus Extravaganza, I know this isn't your first one. So let us know the history a little bit about this event, uh, Shane. Yeah, so f- firstly, we're delighted to have you over, um, as we are with all the guests to attend the Extravaganza. So I, I suppose... Where this all started was three years ago. We wanted a staple event and we wanted to do something different. So we always had our national calf show and um, our premier sale kind of used to move around a bit. But we just kind of wanted to set something in stone that everybody knows at the start of October every year. This is where we have to go to see the best cattle. And that's how it all began. So what happens is the extravaganza is a two day event. The Saturday is our premier sale and we have select number of heifers and select number of bulls in that then on the saturday night we have a bit of get together it's a social event it's where breeders get to i suppose leave their hair down a small bit because we're always in a rush at shows to get the cattle there bring the cattle home whereas this is time where the people get to relax the breeders get to relax and then on the following day we have our national calf show so our national calf show it's become the envy of many i suppose we've got a thousand euro top prize for champion animal on the day there's five championships 11 classes but in the last two years what's really taken the limelight is the premier sale yeah. and we've put a lot of um back in behind this premier sale i suppose so all the animals are pre-inspected they're all photographed by myself or out of the shows um and it's on it's capped at 50 50 females and the only way you can get bulls into it is qualifying through each of the club calf finals. So each of our uh, provinces have club calf finals and the best bulls out of that would qualify. OK. And when you talk to the calf show on the second day, we'll maybe go on to that in a second because that has been going on for a while. But uh, the sale here, we're talking, are they capped at a certain age as well? We're still talking youngsters, young heifers and, and young bulls in this in this sale? Yeah, so for the females, uh, the maximum age for this year we'll take it has been the 1st of January 2022. Now, we also have a requirement that if the animal is born in the early months of 2022, she has to be calved before she's three years old. The majority of our cattle, though, would be from the 1st of January 2023 onwards. So it's kind of your prime stock, your heifers, uh, freshly in calf, some of them calving at two years old. Others would be younger than going into our autumn calves. Um, and then similar with the bulls, the oldest bulls would be the 1st of June onwards, depending on the classes for the club calf. OK, and you say about the bulls, well, just to, to to quantify how they do qualify for that, you said your yeah, club calf shows. Uh, how, how many how many regional clubs do you have there that um, that uh, uh, can contribute to this? And, and how many have you been bringing from each each area? Yeah, so we'd have uh, four clubs. Um, some of them are newer in their club calf championships. Others have been running for decades. Um, but we'd have our Munster, we'd have our Connacht and Egal, we'd have our Leinster, and then our South East. Um, and depends how on the quality of the Bulls at them finals. Just because you go to the finals and win, depending on the standard that's against you, doesn't necessarily mean you get in. So um, generally we'd aim for two out of each of the clubs. So we have a maximum of eight Bulls. But this year we've actually capped it at four Bulls. Um, so just based on the numbers that went out and the quality that was there, we said we're better off to have four rather than bringing the eight and having a mediocre standard throughout, you know? Okay, that's that's a brilliant thing to do to keep the standards up when you've got a specialist event like this. And who who's involved in doing the doing the judging, I suppose, to, to, to work out the requirements that are coming to the sale? Is, is there a, a panel of you? And, and who's all involved in, in the event anyway? Yeah, so the 
we'd obviously be I myself and Felicity McGrath would be our technical manager. We'd be over the the office side of it, but we're obviously working with a very very product, productive and um, proactive council as well. We've got a super top table there, and all the regional um council members are absolutely super as well. So look, we're all involved in making the event happen, but I suppose when we're going around doing the photograph and stuff it's me uh, if there's any qualms or if there's anyone's close then we'd send out the council member representatives to decide because this year we've been inundated with entries we actually had 90 female entries and we've capped that at 50 and that'll be our cap every year so just to re-emphasize the quality of the standard is actually going to be there Okay, that sounds like an interesting job that you got on your hands, a political job as well, I guess. Uh, no, having been there and done that myself, but obviously you've whittled them down, as you said there. So if you've got 90 and you've taken the best 50, then you really are going for the top quality. Without a doubt. And look, I, I suppose the focus on this time of year over here was always on the females. That's why we put such a strict cap on the bulls, I suppose, because look, our, predominantly our market over here is the dairy market and all the bulls we wanted to go to the sale were going to be focused at the pedigree market okay. just because of the time of year but saying that while we have focused on the females it's actually been the bulls that have taken the lime like the last few years so that'll just show you how strict we are with them so if you go back to last year's sale we would, the top price would have been 9-2 which would have been the top price um, male in the country um, so that was for a drum bearer bull that actually headed across the water to the UK to, to Gina Barraclough um, and the year before, it was the top price was ten and a half thousand, and that was actually for a nine month old bull calf that was purchased for stud and Dovey Genetics. Okay, Dovey, of course, very big in the Angus themselves, and 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 you talk about going across the water. Of course, we'll 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 continue on with your extravagant details in a second, but it always is a little bit of a, of an issue with cattle coming out of the UK across to you guys. But is it fairly unrestricted? You put in cattle back into the UK. I know you guys are shipping into Europe as well. Yeah, so look, look, that's one of the biggest things we've seen, I suppose, since the whole Brexit. We had to split out on our own from Scotland office. We're still in good communication with Scotland and work with them very closely. We actually have our youth development finals um, with Scotland coming up, and that's in Ireland this year. So that's actually on the week before the extravaganza. So it's all go over this side. But yeah, look, we have our EU members. There's 19 countries we're registering for now as well. And luckily the exports are coming over this way. So if we look at last year's sale, it was nearly 40% of animals exported. Really? So um, a lot of them would have went to mainland UK. There would have been 10, I think, mainland UK. There would have been Northern Ireland. We also had shipments going off to Portugal as well. Okay. So the, the, um, and will you get, let, let's just um, see who comes to the sale then and what sort of numbers of people we get in there. Obviously, you've got a big dinner in the evening and you'll have your numbers sorted out for that. But is there a few uh, overseas buyers coming in from Europe as well as from the UK? Um, or coming yeah, as, a, as, far, as far as I know, there's um, some Portuguese um, on the way over again. We've got um, a tour from Spain and I think there's a tour coming from Italy as well. So they're confirmed. And look, I've no doubt the people will travel again from Northern Ireland and the UK. And we do offer something very special, as I suppose, an extra bit of incentive for our export market because we realize um, how good they are to us. So what we do is if anybody buys at the extravaganza, they actually get their accommodation covered if they're outside of Ireland. OK, that's very good of you. That just certainly is a good incentive for people to get the, the hand in the pocket. And yeah, there will be some sightseers, tyre kickers, as there always are at these events. But I'd imagine yeah. if, people, if people are jumping on a plane to come across to you to have a look at these, especially the way it's been publicised beforehand, they will be coming to look to buy. So that certainly brings them in. Yeah, and look, we're delighted to see everybody there, whether they're buying or looking. The, the more the merrier. We're delighted to show people the quality of stock that we have over here in Ireland, especially that with the National Calf Show. There's a lot of animals that are coming to that that maybe breeders are holding on to, and it just emphasizes um, how good the quality we have or stock we have over here. Um, well, one of my questions I was going to ask is: is some will some of the animals at the the National Calf Show is a show, not a sale, isn't it? But uh, none of these animals will go go forward to that. I suppose they'll be sold the, the day before, well, or, do, or do they qualify for that as well? We do something very unique in that aspect as well. So what we do is any of the animals born after the first of January twenty three are automatically entered for the show the following day. Okay. Um, and what happens there is if the buyer buys the animal, we have no pre-sale show. Every animal goes into the ring as a champion, and it's up to the buyers to decide who their champion is. But on the other side, if they want to show them as well, 
then they're automatically into the next day and they have a chance of recouping a thousand euro off the purchase price. Wow, okay, that's uh, you come in with a cheap, cheap animal if you did that, to be fair. And and that's so they're automatically into it. And I suppose they go, do they change ownership? So the guy, the, 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 the new buyers go through and enter them in their own name, or do they stay in the in the breeder's exactly. name until? So they're automatically entered into the catalogue. They go down with no name if they're entered in the sale, and then it's up to the buyer to show them. Um, but usually what happens is they come to an arrangement with um, the seller to say, look, you show them and you can get X amount of prize money or vice versa, you know. So um, mm-hmm. most of the exhibitors are happy to show them anyway because, look, they're afraid to enjoy it at the end of the day and an extra day out will do no harm. Of course, of course, that sounds like a, a very unique event, and it's not just that that's unique as well. You've come up with a, I don't know, with you or the marketing brains behind this one, but you've come up with yet something even more unique at the sale this year there to incentivize um, the buyers. So tell us about that. Yeah, so this is something very special. So this is this was my brainchild. Um, I'm taking credit for it anyway. So <laughs> what we have is we have um, you pick, we pay. So it's a brand new campaign. It's the first of its kind, I think in Ireland, the EU, or maybe anywhere in the world. But the way we're selling is it's better than any lotto. So you go to the sale, you bid on the animal that you like. So you're going to the sale anyway, so just bid on the animal you like. And at the very end of the sale, if there's 40 animals sold or 50 animals sold, them 50 lot numbers will go into the draw and the number that comes out will get their animal completely free. So that's kindly sponsored by ourselves and Angus Beef Ireland, which is our gold sponsor for the event. So they, they can end up... <laughs> end up with going it so one one of those 50 buyers is going to end up there taking an animal home for nothing exactly and look based on the last two years the prices could go up at ten and a half thousand there'll be some of them at three thousand but look whatever it lands on it's covered so not even the the mark commission will be charged person that goes there that bids highest and wants that animal there's a chance they could be walking out there paying absolutely nothing I'm just doing the math here, and you said it's better than a lotto. So theor- theoretically, I could come to your sale. Uh, you would pay for my accommodation. Well, I, as a buyer, come to your sale. You'd pay for my accommodation if I bought an animal. I'd buy an animal, they're going to end up taking it home for free and still entering it in the car show the next day and winning a thousand pounds. Exactly. So <laughs> you could be you could be up a thousand, but we'd be hoping you could come back next year again and spend the same. There we go. There we go. What a, what a great idea! Well, that sounds superb. I've never heard of that before, but uh, that's. I mean, I, there's a lot of online sales, and you'll know yourself, Shane, throughout the world now, and especially in America, a lot of animals being sold online, and of course there will be online bidding available with this as well. I guess through through Marta. Eh? So, how, um, does, yeah. So does that, do they can they register for that as well? Yeah, we we work very closely with Marta, and um, particularly from the get go of this event, um, they're absolutely super. They've got an excellent team there with Jamie and Mark and the whole gang, and um, even with the quality of our catalog, they designed it up for us. Um, I think it's the envy of most people when they see it. Um, so look, we work very closely with them. We see a lot of sales going online, and maybe not every animal that sold goes online. But there's good online activity previous to the the final bid you know so yeah look we're delighted to have them on board and it's, it's just a super facility to have that a couple of years ago seemed like a, a distant uh dream distant dream indeed and they're super successful as you said and i know they've the chaps have been on this podcast as well and explained to us how it works so there will be buyers sitting at home in in, in various parts of, of of europe and and america can watch as well i assume but uh there'll be buyers sitting at home in the uk and they can bid up with the confidence knowing that uh when that hammer goes down through my tie that uh the arrangements will, will be made or they can sort out the arrangements to get those animals back into uk exactly so the way we work is um we ask all the breeders before the sale if they're happy to take the animals home and if they go for export. For the last two years, all the breeders have agreed to that um, and there's nothing to say it be any different this year. But if we look at just last year, figures, I think we had 10 different countries bidding. Um, so while there was three countries they went in that were successful bidders, there's actually 10 countries bidding. So look, yeah, it's the, the ease of having it on your phone or your laptop or whatever, you know. Absolutely superb. What a great idea and, and uh, a superb event and said I'm looking forward to. And and just talk us through the Sunday. The National Calf Show is something that's been going on for quite a while, I know. And as you said, it's moved around before. But is this something that uh, you get big numbers of entries and everybody wants to crack at? Yeah, definitely. I, I suppose even from the extravaganza weekend, it's up another tier, if you get me. Um, it's just, it's the one to win, really. 
between that and the All Ireland, which we had a few weeks ago, um, they're the two main events, and you usually get 100, 120 calves um forward for this. So they would be females born from the first of the first uh twenty three onwards, and then the males would be born from the first of August twenty three onwards. Um, so look, it's it's a great representation of what we have on offer here in Ireland. Okay, no, it sounds like it, and they said some of those may be traded as well. I assume, but most people will take the best ones to that. And uh, yeah, who just remind us who won the All Ireland Day? It was what, a few weeks ago. Yeah, so we'd um, in the Carney and Adam Carney, uh, father and son duo, won it with Jaden Lady Sandra. So she was a two year old heifer uh, with a calf a foot. And it's one thing we're kind of striving for here in the associations to promote all the attributes that is so great about the Angus breed and definitely being able to calve at two years old and rare a calf well is one of them. So, look, I was delighted to see at the All Ireland finals, we've done a bit of work to try to get classes that suit that cow. I was delighted to see in the junior cow class, there was eight two-year-old cows with calves a foot and eventually the overall champion came out of that class as well. So, look, we'd shown a McLaren over from the Netherton herd who's well known. Um, I know you had Willie on the podcast not too long ago. Mm-hmm. So, look, we, we built a bit of profile that way and again, coming for the extravaganza for our national calf show, we've got Johnny, Johnny Elliott from the, the well-known Robert and Hurt. So, look, um, great calibers of judges coming over and, Look, hopefully now we can put on a good show for Johnny as well. Certainly you will. Johnny, a great judge of cattle too, as Shona is, and, and, and the McLarens, as you said. And I did, when I spoke to Willie McLaren the other day on the podcast, you may well have heard, he said, we've got a contingent coming over from Ireland to the to the sale that they're having on their place. So is that, does that include a credit to you guys? Because he said he might have to get some more whiskey in. Yeah, well, look, the, the easiest answer for Willie is to make sure he spends enough money the two weeks previous and the Irish can go over there with pockets full as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, there is an Irish contingent going over. I think one of the clubs are organising a tour over there. So they're going to um, Willie's sale and then we're going to the Sterling Bull sales, uh, which obviously have the, the draft this year as well. Yes, that's right. A lot of females in the Sterling Bull sales this time or somewhere. I'm going to intend to be there myself as well. So, uh, well, um, Shane, very much thank you for inviting me to come over to the, the the show there, and we'll we'll try and when we get there with a second podcast, talk to a lot of people that are there and to get an understanding of sort of how the breed is going in Ireland and and some of your movers and shakers and obviously uh, th- those lucky winners as well. So uh, and the lucky buyers there. So uh, sounds like it'd be a fantastic event that everybody should be at. Yeah, and look, thanks a million for coming over. I know we tried to work our schedules last year, but unfortunately Ireland were playing Scotland in the rugby in the World Cup, so it just didn't work out. But no, look, delighted you took up our offer this year. And look, to all your listeners, we'd be delighted to see you there. If there's anything we can do on our side to make that happen, just give us a shout. My Scottish wife would have rather been, would rather have not gone to that game, to be fair. But uh, yeah, well done to you guys for winning that one. No, well, that's brilliant. So we look forward to seeing you over there and, and we will pull together another podcast in a few weeks' time, Shane. Sounds good. Thanks a million again, Andy. Brilliant. Thanks. It's great to speak to you. Thank you for listening to this special episode of the Top Lines and Tales podcast. And as you can hear, that event there, the Aberdeen Angus extravaganza there in Turles in Tipperary in Southern Ireland. And I probably didn't give you the date. And that date is, of course, the weekend of the 5th and 6th of October. So the weekend of the 5th and 6th of October there, dial into Martai if you can't make it, but more to the point, get yourself a trip over there to Southern Ireland and that will be a fantastic event to see some great Angus cattle and some the best genetics, as you heard there, that Ireland has to offer and, and some of the best genetics, surely, throughout Europe. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Harbro, for their continued support with the Top Lines and Tales podcast. And uh, don't forget, you can always find out what Harbro have to offer there on the internet. And uh, we'll contact your local representative or drop into your Harbro store if you're about there in those areas in Scotland. And uh, while you're there on the internet, of course, don't forget to join in our Top Lines and Tales Facebook community there. and uh, Just join the group and uh, dive in and we'll have some information about this sale and about other things that are going on in the livestock world throughout the world.